Thanks. So here's my lightning produced session. I kind of quickly whip something up uh, that we've been working on. Just a few in time things. presentation. It is, yes. Um, I've been working a few on a few different things, and in particular, I thought this might be interesting. But instead of talking about the technical side of some of the stuff we did, is more of the, the genesis for it. So today's topic that I've um, selected here is uh, how we designed a design system. <laughs> so we built something called Civic Theme, which I'll talk about in a second. And this is more about the, the precursor steps to how we got to this kind of place that we have a product and a design system. So today I'll try and cover some of these topics as quickly as possible. There's not as many pictures, but there is a demo of um, a Figma design file and a design system itself, which I really want to kind of show you more so than this. This is kind of the interesting, but yes, less boring, well, maybe less interesting, I don't know, depending which parts you like more, but uh, there's some background to it. And then we'll go through a demo uh, towards the end. Uh, feel free to kind of maybe keep questions to the end. I don't know, it's actually how it normally works. <laughs> Okay, so um, a design system. So the problem we were trying to solve uh, was that we had, um, there were a lot of projects that we were obviously working across with government in particular, um, that we're all kind of doing the same thing and specifically trying to come up with design patterns for new sites. And that was a repeated pattern that we were seeing across all the um, projects we're working on. And it was kind of things that are kind of common that we found these patterns across many projects we're working on. And there's always a cost involved in developing every single time from scratch, from the base, right? So there are high development costs and you do have to build these things over and over again. Um, and each of those things as you build them takes time as well. So having to do the process, um, coming through kind of a visual design with the design agency, um, building the visual theme itself, then getting it validated and tested and building it out, then also doing accessibility and compliance and other things takes time and cost. Um, and especially when you were kind of building uh, bespoke visual designs or themes in the earlier, especially with GovCMS in the earlier versions, um, there was a kind of a UI kit, um, which was very useful, but with the D9, uh, GovCMS D9 version, D9 for GovCMS didn't come out with a visual theme at all. So um, we were looking at, you know, well, what can we do to kind of potentially help with that? So. Uh, some of the work that we were doing, so also if we found that there was a, a lack of consistent user experience, um, as I mentioned, with the accessibility standards and other kind of UX um, standards and, and best practice. And with some of the solutions that were out there, there is a, a lack of flexibility uh, and potential scalability for what there was. So we kind of came up with a vision for a design system and we called it a civic theme. And Civic Theme is an open source design system, which aims to provide a quick, easy, and cost-effective solution to building new websites. So out of the box, Civic Theme would be able to deliver a high set of components, high quality set of components and features that can be used immediately. Um, and web publishers and administrators, so non-coding people, can create and manage page designs and layouts without any coding. So one of the things that we've found or we kept hearing from uh, a lot of the government agencies um, specifically that they needed to always engage or not always but quite often engage uh, a design agency or a, um, a development partner to be able to make changes to their sites and whether that's a template change or a layout change or something else um, so this kind of flexibility within the uh, design or the the website itself is very limited and very div difficult for them to manage ongoing so we decided to do the um, uh, Civic Theme as an open source project. Um, the design system itself is developed, is developed and has been developed by and maintained by Salsa. We're about to go live with the first version, which will then be fully open source. Right now, there are elements of it that are open source. A lot of things are available. Um, we have a site at the moment, um, civictheme.io, which makes the code base and the Figma design um, files uh, available online as well. So all of it's kind of open source at the moment. Um, we're on a kind of a pre-launch version. Uh, and these versions have been um, used by uh, some projects and we're testing everything out. So how do we go about designing this? We did a kind of a four-step approach to this. So we did some work um, to do some customer research and also do some user experience testing and auditing of existing GovCMS websites. That kind of give us an idea of what, what we were trying to look for and what patterns, as I mentioned earlier, that we were looking for as well and what would be common for um, the design system to be able to serve the uh, client base or the audience. 
we also found it was quite important to kind of ground all the work we were doing uh, and using the Australian government or the now <laughs> decommissioned government, Australian government design system as kind of a base um, that was already used and, and well built, uh, well designed. Uh, thanks Morphed as well to kind of help out with some of the UI kit stuff there in the earlier versions. Um, and it was and it was quite a good base for us to kind of look at what is there now and what components can we uplift and build into this design system as a, as a common uh, for the common library. Uh, and so then we also used um, our UX expertise uh, and kind of uplift the design patterns that were there uh, that we could find. What we did is we um, did user-led, uh, user research based on project-led development. So we were able to create a standard product development approach and then we coupled that with project-led development. So we have several kind of early stage or uh, initial clients that worked with shaping civic theme. And the clients that we kind of worked with quite a while ago, this would be <laughs> almost two years ago now, is um, CASA, so the Civil Aviation Safety Authority. And they did the, probably the earliest work with user research designs. And so they worked on these designs, had them tested um, with their design agency at the time. And then we also used the feedback that we got from updating these designs and then fed them into um, what civic theme could potentially look like as we went forward as far as the design goes. Um, to probably mention that the civic theme system is built on atomic design. Uh, so it's kind of a modular approach, but I'll kind of show that uh, once we get into the demo itself. The other, one of the other clients was the Australian Energy Infrastructure Commissioner, so the Ackley site. Uh, and this adopted the designs um, kind of in their early assessment and discovery phase, which we then refined uh, and then fed into the Figma designs that we ended up using. Um, and one of the other larger, more robust sites that we were able to test it was, with was the Office of National Intelligence. Um, we used re user research designs. Um, they were, we worked with an agency, so a design agency to kind of validate some of these. And at the end, these were actually contributed back um, as, and built as a part of a theme for the site itself, which was quite uh, an intensive process to do kind of iterations of testing and kind of implementing and then refining. And so those final refinements were um, kind of collated and put into Civic Theme MVP. So that was quite a good process that kind of battle tested some of the things that we're trying to do. Uh, I'm kind of skim kind of through these, a lot of words on these, but basically this was just what we ended up designing for the Figma design tools. So in Figma, we used Figma as the online tool that was um, available for everyone eventually to be able to use as open source. And within the kind of initial outputs, we just thought that it was quite important to have kind of a set of uh, outputs to drive the, the project as, as far as the design system goes. So we built design templates. Um, these are desktop and mobile um, ready and responsive and publicly available in Figma. The, we have the actual design system. So as I mentioned before, we've got the atomic design based system with structures, components. Uh, and we also use Storybook, and I'm not sure how many people are uh, familiar with Storybook, but it was a, this this way we can actually kind of um, show and get anyone to kind of use and play with the, the um, components and structures themselves without having to spin up a site. So Storybook allows these components to be able to um, viewed, previewed, and tested uh, in uh, kind of an online environment without having to run up a separate site. So there's kind of a library of all the components available in the design system that you can use and see and actually play with. And I can show you that later as well. The usage and adoption guidelines for um, the open source project. We also put in a contribution give back guidelines again for open source, a getting started pack components in the library itself. It's a CMS agnostic UI component library uh, <laughs> for the dreamers and themers out there. And we also have the actual Drupal theme as well. So the first iteration that we built was a Drupal 9 theme. Um, so that was obviously to, to meet as many of the Drupal uh, GovCMS compliance that we had, clients that we had and all the projects for the, the impending uh, end of life for Drupal 7. So I'm going to jump over to the demo in a moment. And um, what we have is we've, I'm not sure how many people are familiar with Figma. Uh, Figma is kind of an online tool that uh, allows you to do designs, but also it allows you to build prototypes. And it's quite a powerful system. And we use that as a the choice to be able to work collaboratively on this particular project. So we have a version of Figma that you can view and use, but you can also kind of comment and tag and there are instructions on how to actually contribute back. So I am just going to quickly switch.
So it will run in a web format as well. I actually have the download of desktop. So we have the design system. So in here, we have a few different pages. So the pages are down the side there. But in particular, we have um, how to use this particular library, what's in this library, and how to kind of get orientated to, to how it works. Now, this is an earlier version. It's a new version coming out imminently, which is in the next week or so. And, and it actually does change this around quite a lot. So I'm not going to dwell too much on how this looks at the moment. It has it is actually uh, been changed considerably, especially how the color palette is um, uh, set up. It is quite different now. We've done quite a lot of testing and both with clients um, and different projects and the way that it works, the definitions and everything else has, has been kind of evolved quite a lot. And so this is just the instructions. So I'll kind of skip over that. There's also instructions on how to actually contribute. So we want to make this as uh, open source and community friendly as possible. So the instructions and drum roll. I'm just going to open up the design system. If I can. Oh, 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 yep, there it is. OK, so you can see that there's quite a few screens. So each of these kind of tabs, I will zoom in, in a second. Um, contains different elements that we have in the atomic design system. So atomic design system breaks down things into atoms, uh, molecules, and organisms. So you kind of have a buildup of individual atoms that go into building up the um, organisms and molecules themselves. So we've got the structure, we've got spacing and grid. So if you have the design system, it already has all this built in and, consider it and considered. So the components themselves kind of do comply with these kind of basic um, setup things in the actual designs as well. So you've got color palettes uh, in the newest version, which is soon to come out. You can actually change these colors and this will actually flow through the design files themselves. So you change this color and your palette and you can actually see the components uh, and test out the components and see how that actually works. So it kind of flows down from the uh, palette itself here, the primary palette in the design files. So that way you can test and apply your own palette or a new palette. So good for projects that may not even be designed yet. The designers uh, can actually use this, download the files. Uh, actually, we actually did have a client ask for the design files for their project. So they have an in-house design team and they're actually using the design system and the Figma files to actually build their own and design their own project. I, I know you said questions at the end, but could I yes. ask a quick question? Yes, I, don't want, I don't want to interrupt your flow too much. Oh, um, sure. Just on that, so that, that's really cool. Like, you know, I'm, um, you know, agency X and I've got my own color palette and I want to, you know, configure um, civic theme for my, for my colors. Um, if I was to do that and, and start building out my my version of the civic theme, do, am I at that stage forking to Figma? And why I ask that is, you you know, Salsa develops civic theme as we go along. And if I fork to it, how do I sort of, Get the new features that are downstream or later on or is that I'm actually I'm not sure if i articulated my question well enough but no 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 it's a really good question i am going to get a confirmed answer i guess when we go live with the latest version so at the moment i guess what you would do is take a copy of this and then retain what you have for that now it depends on how that design if you need to use it again for another project or whether it's a one-off like once you get a copy it's for that particular project in the code base, it's different. In the code base, the changes that go to the core uh, Figma designs uh, filter downstream. So they'll filter through from the designs as things get accepted through the open source project. There are contributions made. Once they're made to the original core design files, they go down to the code base. But from a, from a design file point of view, if you take a copy of that, it's up to you whether you want to keep maintaining it or whether you need to. Um, or whether you to take another copy. So it kind of depends on how the project gets um, used from a client point of view. Okay, thanks. I think that, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure the actual linkage right now as far as, hey, you can get an update on it. Um, I'm gonna find out once the new structure is built because I think some of those linkages may or may not be there. Uh, so in the typography, you can adjust this. It gives you an example of different types of uh, fonts that are there and how they look specifically. And I'm going to 
skim over to these icons, but more importantly, what we do have is the components themselves. So what the buttons would look like in different states. And this is still the atomic design. There's lots of detail in here. And it goes over all the way across to headers and footers and menus and uh, bottom menu. So you can see what the footer menu could look like. And these are just the molecules and organisms as we're moving through. So you can see there's the typography is being added to the next part, to the next part, building up these functional components. Uh, more importantly, and probably most useful are these kind of cards components. So we now have promo cards and kind of preset designed functional components that you can just turn on and off or even configure. So you can pick a card and then you can make it in or select it as a news card or a event card or a project card or a service card <laughs> or a topic card. And then there's another set of navigation. So if you, depending on what you select, you can actually adjust the input within the cards themselves. So in, now that we've actually built the design system as well, in the design system in Drupal, you can pick, hey, I want to use a card. You then select the card and then it gives you the fields that you can put in there. And then it will actually display them. So you can actually change these and use not all of these are necessary. So the way that this is also built is that there um, there's a concept of kind of slots within the card itself. And within the card itself, you can t choose to turn on and turn off um, particular slots. What that does is give um, any developer or even um, the uh, managing team, the, the, the web content team to actually change and adjust the actual content, them, uh, the navigation tiles and components themselves without needing a developer. Just trying to find where it is here. I think it's further down, but uh, I'll explain that in a second. Um, yeah, I'll show you in a particular one. So, so in the back end, you can actually go in and change that you don't need to show that um, or this or the state, for instance, and you can switch those around. It gives you the flexibility to adjust and kind of customize some of these cards to suit your site. That way there's a bit of um, customization and flexibility within the cards without having to go to a developer and add new fields, for instance. So what we also did is there's lots of uh, lots of items there. There's also alerts, message global alerts, navigation items. Now, the other thing we also did uh, is create, and I'm not, uh, is a kind of a flipped version. So a dark version or dark variants. So if you needed to use any of the alt colors or variants, you can actually see what that would look like as well. Now, these are all the molecules and components individually. What we also did is we put them together uh, in kind of pre-configured states to show as an example what the pages would look like once they're actually in place. So again, if you were to take this design file, adjust the colors and palette to your own, this would actually flow through and change the buttons and the components here in the design system itself. So in this kind of Figma file environment which makes it much easier for you to actually test uh, what you're looking at. You can also move these around. These are actually components and they've been designed in the sim same way or similar way to how um, the component system would actually work on a page as it was built. So here we've got a white header with a banner component and some cards here. There's an alt version with the dark background and light colored cards. There's the same two variants with light and dark theme to show what they could look like. And we have lots of variations of page headlines, mobile version, and then the actual footer itself, variations of the footer, and components on a page, hero components, nav card components. This one's also got some secondary buttons on there and that's quite a few pages. So <laughs> nav cards upon nav cards, listing pages, listing components, different types of listing components, all the different variations. So this is all available 
in the actual design system itself, but also in the code base. So when you get the civic theme build, you have all of this out of the box. So the intention here is that you can start up a site very quickly with minimal development and coding and start at a pretty high level to then just replace the images, obviously add your content or migrate the content in and the design and the visual theme and the accessibility is all being covered. So part of the project that we had, we actually do have accessibility compliance statements. So part of what we did is we looked at the individual components there and um, did a test on each of those, which you can replicate and try yourself if you make a variation to it, but also says what it was, but also there's a rationale against the Australian government design system about why we lifted it, uh, why we think it's important and what the differences are potentially with um, each of the components. So all of those uh, the compliance statements and other uh, details are actually on the civictheme.io site if you wanted to have a look at it. But the Figma design files are all here. There's quite a lot of componentry. I think there's about 60 different components and then there's variations that you can configure without coding in the actual site itself in the admin area. So then you can actually see these pages in context of the desktop. So the home page, try and zoom in. That's what a home page could look like. You could have a kind of a landing page there. So this has no content. The category pages, that's what a content page would look like with a side nav and content. You can even sign up to newsletters. So you can actually connect to whatever EDM or email direct marketing system you want as well. Social icons. Navigation. And then I'll quickly show in mobile. So the same thing, you can see what it looks like in mobile. So all of these considerations are kind of pre-made within the design system at this stage. And then these all flow down to the code base. So when a client uses or adopts or uses um, Civic Theme itself, they can use this as a base. If they're happy with that, they can just keep using it as is. The open source nature means that any updates to the core will actually get flowed through. The way it's architected is that any changes that are made are based on a sub theme, I believe, and CSS changes, and then the base gets updated, but your changes don't get overridden. So it makes it a much smoother flow <laughs> for updates. But in, on again, on top of that, if you really wanted to build or extend the components, you can do that as well. And if you wanted to fully customize or create your own, that's also possible as well. So the intention is that Civic Theme provides a really high base for you to either keep or build upon. I think that's pretty much it as far as the demo goes. Are there any questions or does anyone want to see anything specifically? Everyone's really happy, that's great. <laughs> so I will switch back to presentation, which is almost over. So the outcomes and bigger picture, as I mentioned, we've got, um, we've produced the design system as Figma designs, and now we have a chance for higher quality, consistent, uh, compliant designs. We have lower delivery costs, the designs that we have much quicker, as I mentioned, it's out of the box, all of those are available. Greater consistency and consolidation for user experience, lowers the gap in cost for adaptations. And there's also a uh, greater adoption for default design. And re re this is the key one is reduced maintenance burden because if it's an open source project, then there's a lot of the maintenance is managed by, by us <laughs> or the community. As far as it goes for different groups, content managers specifically um, can get uh, developed a site that's quite sophisticated with pages without needing a developer to build or, or uh, manage templates or even pages. They can literally build a page, configure it, move the components around on the page, either make it a standard content page, make it a landing page, et cetera, and they can change things around. And even with the, the way that it's built, that you can actually have content and you can have even the components within that page as well. So it doesn't just have to be content or a component-based page. It can be a mix or a, a blend of whatever you need to have on there. For site builders, it's easy and um, simple to assemble um, with that large library of components ready to go and for designers less focus on customizations and more on user research ia and ux so you can use the design system here to actually modify components to look at the ia specifically and not worry about actually trying to build the components themselves um, 
from a design point of view as far as Hoopman goes, but even in um, rapid prototyping, we can actually build um, Civic Theme in about 20 minutes in a sandbox environment. So you can kind of put in your site details and it will spin up in 20 minutes. And then you have basically a rapid prototype. You can build out the IA, you can adjust the menus and do what you need to. You can create kind of variants and then you can A-B test them as part of the user research before the actual site gets finalized. And then for agencies, obviously there's a large cost reduction and agencies in this case, government agencies in particular um, that we've been working with, quite a large reduction in cost. Um, you don't have to build the site from scratch every single time. This is a high base to build with. You don't necessarily have to do all your um, design and, and UX from a design agency. If you wanna move things as is, there's quite a uh, easy way to update the design. Uh, so the, the branding and the theming pretty quickly within the, um, the, the design system itself. As I mentioned before, so the design system is linked to the actual build itself. Changes in the design system files flow downstream to Civic Theme code base when they're made. And the current system is kind of pre-release and it will be released very shortly. And we've already used the Civic Theme design system in six projects with several more in development at the moment. And it's based on an open source community so we can contribute back to either the code base or the design design file system, design system files. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? I've got some questions, Akim. Uh, yes. Is it okay if I just dive in? Absolutely. Okay, cool. So question number one is, are you then using the Drupal uh, implementation for your sort of prototyping? In terms of prototyping as in the design system itself, yeah. like the build, we've actually yeah. built, yeah, we've built it in Drupal. So it is, yeah. although it's CMS agnostic at the moment, the first mm -hmm. iteration is Drupal and we've already built a GovCMS version. So right. it's kind of optimized for GovCMS, um, but we have got, it's basically just Drupal. So it is uh, agnostic from programs per se. Okay. and. Like I, I've, I've noticed in some of the other salsa presentations that you guys have been leaning towards like a, a single sort of mega content type. Um, is that still the approach or? It is. It well, it's debatable. We've had many discussions <laughs> uh, and what we, what we have done for, for Civic Theme at least and in the design system itself, both in the design, Figma designs and also in the build, is there is just one content type. However, you can actually modify the content type and what we're working on as part of the release is kind of a profile builder. So you can kind of pick and choose the components you want as a preset. So if you want it to be news, you can kind of preset um, uh, elements um, that optimize that for a news uh, type or another type um, because it is quite flexible. You can kind of just switch on and off different components and elements in there. And okay, so then my next question is, um, are you using like uh, like a base frame framework like Bootstrap or is this something completely from scratch? That's an excellent question. I may have to lean on Alan to help. I believe it's Bootstrap. From scratch. Oh, it's from, from scratch? scratch. Well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. very interesting. Um, and do you have any comments about the sort of uh, retirement of the Australian government design system? General comments? It's interesting. Yeah, just general. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, so that was interesting to see how, um, I guess, when it moved from DTA to Australian Government Design System, they decided to retire that. It's also interesting that GovCMS decided that they didn't want to put anything in place because there was obviously maintenance around that and they wanted to let people, as in their customers and everyone else, choose what they wanted to choose. So mm. I guess what we were looking at as well, this at least helps with. Um, at least our clients and hopefully others uh, to kind of maybe build upon what the DTA or the Turin government design system was trying to do. Okay. And then in terms of the civic theme, because clients can change the colours, like the background of cards and the font colours, yes. how do you <laughs> enforce WCAG contrast compliance and things like that? So there's been a few different discussions on that, um, whether we can put a color checker in there, et cetera, but it's, uh, there's not, a, not really a, a force of compliance. There is a degree of 
designers, probably as far as the design system and the palette goes, you either bring a preset palette, but if you're designing from scratch, including the palette, then I guess there would be um, some testing that you would need to do to ensure that that actually works, right? The normal kind of testing, once you have the designs, you would do your normal checks for accessibility, con color contrast, et cetera. So uh, there are no preset color sets per se, um, but yeah, it would be the normal kind of design process to ensure that that works. Okay. And are you following like a, you know, the, the primary alt, <laughs> dark, dark alt approach or is it not that rigid? It was initially, I think in the demo that mm. I did show, it kind of displayed mm. that. And the new version is very, very different. We went, we kind of just went completely different from the primary, secondary, tertiary. Mm. Uh, the, I'm just trying to open it now. The, um, the mapping to the colors is very, very different. Uh, it took weeks of testing, playing. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, yeah, <laughs> because we even went from this and did variations of this and just tested it out, but it's actually completely different. So um, right. what this originally did was we you had a primary palette, so this kind of primary, secondary, and accent color, and it would apply it. But what it would do also is um, kind of apply, apply variations automatically apply variations from the primary color and add neutrals to components. Uh, mm -hmm. It did make it very tricky to kind of nail down what the colors were for particular com components. So although you've got these primary component uh, colors over there in the palette, uh, when you look at the components, where am I going to look at to show the example? The banner is what I'm trying to find actually. The banner was a different color. It's not on there now. Oh yeah, these dark brown, this is it here. So the banner, for instance, to make it easier to read was a variation, a darker variation of the original color. Oh. Um, but then people are going, hey, but that's not my color. <laughs> you know, it's not my palette color, my brand color, it's off brand. So yeah. just that kind of experimentation of, of how we do that. So the color mapping is completely different now, but you can override it. So this is kind of a, a starting point. So as far as the components go, you can override the components individually and kind of map them to work work better with your palette. Thank you. It's it's really exciting. Well <laughs> it's done, been a guys. long journey. Thank you. Yeah, I can imagine there's <laughs> a lot of work that's gone into this. It's yes. great to see. And uh, uh, Achille, maybe I missed it, but did you did you announce the release date? Tentative? I don't I haven't mentioned a date, <laughs> kind of on purpose. All right. <laughs> I, said, I said imminently was, I think it's next week. I, I, what is the date actually? Because I think it, I've tried not to look at the date. <laughs> uh, yeah, next week 19th is what I've heard. Yeah, yeah. So rumors yeah. are that the official <laughs> release date is the 19th of September for the, the new version. And that's a remapping of, of the design system but also we should be releasing the code base update as well the latest version of civic thing as well so how much time do you think this approach is saving you guys when you're doing a new build like in terms of percentage <laughs> uh oh, as i mentioned we can spin up a civic theme site in 20 minutes and that's in um you know a hosting sandbox environment uh fully stood up so you can use that as a base. So it takes 20 minutes to spin that up and I can even show you what that could look like. So here's the Civic Theme IO site. So it's kind of a marketing site as a very early stage, but for instance, the uh, default. So in the process, we have another product called Launchpad and that allows you to kind of set one up. But once you follow Launchpad, it spits this out. This is basically the site that you get. This is the, the standard out of the box site. From here, you can modify, obviously, the palette, the background, and other things and start adding your content. So there's no build per se. So you kind of save as much as it takes you to build. But in particular, what takes time is these kind of components where you have, you've got um, listing or cards and other things. So you don't have to build those. They're all pre-built, including the menus. Yeah. And they still work. Um, and Julia, yeah. oh, have yeah. worked on a Gov CMS project with Civic Team. Um, I can just say that the initial theme implementation becomes super, super, super easy. I don't have a percentage, but uh, what we did, for example, there is a project that is about to go live tomorrow, actually, and it's a GovCMS SaaS project with 
civic team uh, a civic team team. So we just went ahead and installed civic team. Of course, then we created a sub team, which was the project team, and that's where we started applying changes. Um, the client was pretty much happy with the default core civic team stuff. Only some of the things needed to be changed, so that was super super quick. So yeah, I'm trying to understand <laughs> the the connection between the Figma file and this. Right. Like, do you, do you make do you make the 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 card, for example, the card changes in Figma, and that then flows through into the install? So there, yeah, as there are two components, right, to this to this project, this work thing, right. There's a Figma design. So the Figma designs feed into what the actual code base will end up using. Um, but to manage the design part of it, we test and and kind of implement it in the design system, the files, the Figma files, yep. and they flow through. So if people have uh, improvements to make, or we find improvements from a project, from the implementation, we add it to the design system in Figma. And then that flows down to the core. Right. Okay. So the Figma design files are the kind of source of truth for the design look and feel. Yep. I want to play with it. You can. <laughs> Just go to civictheme.io. I will do that. <laughs> and you can also, yeah, can I, I, think, I think the civic team, the GovCMS team is also uh, open source already. Um, so you can just go and download that and play with it if you want to. So let's see if I can quickly have a question. Yes, yes sure. Um, so I, I come from like a bootstrap background. So I, I worked on a site where I was, um, the client was really concerned with keeping the, um, the footprint of the CSS and JavaScript really small, right? So in bootstrap, uh, it, there's a whole bunch of like components that you can use, but if you don't use it, you can just not load the CSS for that for like major portions of it. So can you do the same thing instead of theme? Like if you don't use some components, can you just not load the CSS for that? Uh, Jim, have we got this one? Yeah, yeah, please. I'm actually playing another. So I haven't seen the civic theme code for a while, a um, couple of months, but last time, I think everything's split into SAS files, but there is a single um, web pack, which is going to put all the components um, together. So you end up with one CSS file at the end of it. So um, I think it would package all the components together. Um, I guess if yeah. you didn't want to use the other thing is it's it's got an interesting uh, base theme sub theme implementation whereby you've got your base theme and you extend it, um, but then you can create your own components um, as part of the build step. It's going to get all the twig and CSS and JavaScript from the base theme and then overlay any of your customizations and then compress it afterwards. So. Um, yeah, I think chances are at, at this stage it probably has. If you only use a few components, you probably get the whole the whole set. But that's um, something that we could always look into. Okay, cool. Thank you. And what are the lighthouse reports like on these sites that you're building? That is an excellent question. I would have to look back and I guess there'd be another, there'd be a later or a newer set of reports because the latest design file, design, Figma design files. Actually, that's a good point. I need to check what that is. Um, but it is, we, tr <laughs> we try and meet AA accessibility and I'm not sure if there's anyone else that can answer that better, but um, yeah, they're, they're, they're made to be compliant with AA accessibility. So we will test okay. them and make sure that they comply to that. Lovely. Thank you. I'll stop asking questions. <laughs> no, that's good. I'm actually trying to think of where it would be on this site. Uh, I know there's compliance in here. Let me get compliance. With... Come back. Where'd it go? I tell you, I'm making everybody dizzy by just. Yeah. 
So I'm trying to find something on the page. <laughs> okay, I'm going to leave that page for now. But um, yeah, there's a compliance statement on here as well. But I don't know if sure, not sure if you noticed in the background, I was playing with the storybook, so you can make the adjustments on the fly there. Yeah. Okay. And Julia, specifically because you wanted to play with it, did you look at that storybook uh, thing that uh, Michael was doing? Yeah, yeah. No, it looks good. Great. Looks great, guys. Thank you. It's been blood and tears and sweat. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. <laughs> Huge. All righty. Uh, any other questions from anybody else? Thanks a lot, Akit, and I'll stop recording now. <laughs>